hello guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video we're going to do a, actually a very interesting project so I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to host llama 2 locally on your machine so i'm going to be doing this using Langchain. so if you probably work with llms before you probably know that most llms that they are actually paid like open ai and other stuff like that okay i kept open ai and the cross uh, prohibited sign between it because uh just to show that you're not using open ai we're going to be hosting our own llm not because i hate open ai i actually love open ai okay so i'm going to show you how to host your own llama locally on a, either using a gpu or a cpu device okay so it doesn't matter that you either you have a computer with a gpu or you have a computer with a cpu or in my case i have both of them i have both of them i have a, a gpu and a cpu so i'm going to show you how to host all of them on these different platforms and also learn how to integrate interact with this uh, run run write different prompts to the llama 2 model using Langchain. okay so let's get started with it so the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do let's just look at the outline of what you're going to be doing so i'm going to be looking at how to load our llm using a cpu we're also going to load, learn how to load it using a gpu and then thirdly for additional bonus we're going to learn how to load it using a transformer so if you know what the transformer as transformers are don't worry and then finally additional bonus we'll also learn how to use uh lang chain lang chains uh, llm chain to interact with this so actually this is a type right here it's actually llm chain okay so if you ever use llm chain in lang chain we're going to be using that to interact with our llama 2 model that you're going to be hosting locally on our device okay so let's look at the outline of what all the things are going to be doing and then let's go over it one after the other so the first you're going to be going ahead and do you're going to go ahead and download the llama 2 a model you're going to be using you're going to be using the seven uh, seven billion parameter model because there are different models there's 70 billion parameter model there is i think 13 billion parameter model in this case you're going to be using the seven billion parameter model okay so the first thing you need to do is actually you need to have this model download because you're going to have everything running locally so you need to go ahead into hugging phase and then you're going to download the llama 2 model with seven billion parameters so how do you do that so i'm just going to go ahead and go in my uh, window right here so i'm just gonna i'm gonna add this link to the description of the video so don't worry you can just go in the description of the video and just click on this link right here so this link brings you to hugging face and you're gonna bring you to this website right here so once you are there you can see we have this llama model that you're, you're going to be using okay so just go ahead and press the download to download it okay and it's going to go uh, it's actually big it's gonna be seven uh seven uh, approximately seven point two megabytes okay so i've already downloaded this already so if you haven't downloaded it make sure that you have this model already downloaded okay so it's going to take a bit of time so just download the model and you can come back and watch the video because you need the model to work with it okay so make sure you have the model downloaded okay okay so i assume now you have the model already downloaded so let's move on to how to load it on our cpu okay so i'm going to show you how to load the llama 2 model that you, that you have just downloaded into your cpu okay so to do that, uh, first of all, we need to install a couple of libraries. So I'm going to be using Langchain for this. So let's just go ahead and make sure, let me show you how to download the uh, library that we need. Okay, actually install, not download it. So I'm going to be using uh, the llama, llama.cpp. So Langchain, as you can see on, on the official documentation of Langchain, and they have this thing called llama cpp python. And this library we're going to be using to actually interact to our llama2 model. So you can see it's right here. So you can just go ahead and copy this right here and go ahead and install it. Okay, so let's just go. I'm going to copy that. And let me just go here and then install it so i'm going to i'm in here already so one thing before you can install it, make sure that you have the latest version of uh la, you have the latest version of langchain uh, on your machine you also have the latest version of python like python 3.8 and above okay so mm -hmm. python 3.7 you have issues okay so this is python 3.9 python 3.10 and above okay so once we have this done i'm just going to go ahead and copy i'm going to copy this or you can just here to copy this and i'm going to go into my terminal right here instead of my terminal i'm going to be using anaconda so make sure that you have anaconda or you can just use the python a normal python virtual environment that has python 3.8 and above okay so i'm going to go in here i'm just going to go ahead and activate my uh, conda environment so i'm going to say conda activate uh, i have a, a, a environment called llms so i'm going to activate llms and you can see now it's activated right here so i have this environment already activated now i'm going to go ahead and simply install this requirement that we just have right here okay so let me make sure you copy this and simply go ahead and make sure that you have it installed so paste that there and press enter and that's going to go ahead and install so i already have it installed i just installed it yesterday to make sure that i'm on the log i'm on the most updated version so you can see the requirements already satisfied okay so make sure that you also have lang chain installed so if you don't have lang chain installed you can just do pip install uh lang chain and you can, you can also go to your documentation just go to docs and just simply go ahead and just click on installation and just do pip install lang chain to have lang chain installed if you're using anaconda you can also see the command to install it using anaconda okay so make sure that you have uh you have uh lang chain installed and also you, you install this library right here which is llama 
uh, CPP Python, which is what we're going to be using to load our Llama model. Okay, so if you want, you can also, if you want to install the CPU version, this is the instruction, the command to install the CPU version. I already have this already installed already, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go over it, okay? If you want to install using Meta, if you're on a MacBook, you can see there are different instructions. So if you're using a Mac OS, uh, using the silicon chip, this is what the command that you need to run to install it, okay? These two commands right here. If you're on a Windows, it can be a bit complicated to install it on Windows, okay? But I'm not going to go over how to do this on Windows, okay? So once I have this done, uh, I think even on Windows, you can just use the CPU version. Just simply do pip install llama cpp python and that will be fine. Okay, you don't have, you don't have to go ahead and do uh, all these steps right here. Okay. Okay, so once we have that installed already, what I'm going to go ahead and do is begin to code. So I'm just going to go into my terminal. And I have my terminal open right here. So I'm going to go to create a file. It's called, we're going to call uh, a llama uh, underscore C cpu okay dot python because you're going to be using this to load our cpu then we have another file for uh gpu and then i'll well, show to integrate this with uh lang chains llm chains okay so i'm just going to go ahead in here so sorry i'm just going to go in here and i'm going to go ahead and copy this right here so copy this right here copy it and simply move back in here i'm going to go ahead and paste that in there so this is an import that we need to have this running okay so this is giving me a warning because it doesn't know which environment I'm running. Okay. So the best thing to do, the easiest way to do this is just simply close your, 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 your VS code and simply open it again. So I'm just going to go ahead in here and I'm just going to go out because the reason why I'm getting that because I didn't activate my virtual environment before opening up my VS code. Okay. So now that I have my virtual environment activated, it, it doesn't really pick it up. So the easiest way to do is simply just close your VS code and open it up again. Or you can also go in here and just simply say uh, this way. And then you can go ahead and select the, the environment that you want to use, which is in, me, in my case, I want to use LLMs and Anaconda environment. So I'm going to go, go ahead and select that. And once I have that selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit save again. And let's see if it's going to pick that up. Sometimes it is an issue. So uh, yeah, now it picks it up. So we are good to go. Okay, so once we have that there, we, are, we have all our imports done. Now let's, now let's begin to code and let's try to load up that LLM model. Okay, so make sure one thing before you, begin, you get started with this is that make sure that you have your model or your the model downloaded. And you have the path to that model okay okay so i assume that you have already have that so let me just go ahead and write, and write here the model path so i'm just going to say model underscore path and i'm just going to go ahead and add, add in my models path right here which is going to be i have is for slash home i'm on a linux machine so i'm going to say home for slash uh prints uh, then finally i'm going to say download so i have it in my downloads okay downloads then for slash i have a uh, llama basically Basically, I can just go ahead and actually get the name from in here. So, uh, sorry, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to go ahead and get the name right here. So, this is the model that I want to use. So, I'm just going to copy it, copy that and simply go back in here and simply delete this and then paste it in there. So, that's the model that I have downloaded and that's the part of the model. So, for slash home, for slash prints, for slash downloads, for slash and then the name of that model. Okay. So, in your case, just find the part that, uh, that to the file that you just downloaded from Hugging Face. Okay. Okay. So once we have this done, I'm going to go ahead and you're going to do two main things. The first thing we're going to do is create a function to generate a prompt, okay? And then finally, we can go ahead and create a function that simply loads the, um, the, the Llama 2 model, okay? So whatever order in, in which you want to execute this, it's all fine, okay? So basically, let's go ahead and begin to... Actually, we don't need, we don't, we don't, we don't actually need a function to load our... Uh, to create a prompt. We'll use that later on, but for now, we don't need a function to do that. So all you need is... Uh, we just need one step, which is just create uh create a function to load uh sorry to load uh a llama model so that's all we need to do so let's go ahead and create that function so i'm going to say dev and we call it load underscore model and then we can begin to code right here so we're going to load this for mainly cpu devices and not any other any other okay so only cpu use so i'm going to go ahead and simply load this right here okay so let's get started with this so we can actually keep a a, a dog string right here and just say load model okay so loads uh model so just like that let's say it loads a llama model so llama model so that's what we have to do okay so once we have that then i'm going to go ahead and we need to create a callback for this to work so we need to create a callback because i want to go and actually stream the model's output onto my terminal so i'm going to create a callback for this i'm going to say call back and going to create a callback it's going to be equals to callback and this is a callback manager that we have imported right here. So we have callback manager imported, that's what we're using. Okay, so callback manager, you're going to go ahead and pass in a string, which is gonna be stream, uh, that's basically it, and then make sure we call this function. So this is the function that we just imported right here. Okay, so let me just close this, so that you guys can have a better view of that, okay? 
Okay, so once we have the callback defined, now let's go ahead and simply load our model. So I'm going to say, I'm going to uh, uh, basically our llama model uh, underscore model. Okay, and this is going to be equals to the full length. So I'm going to say L, L uh, this basically right here. So llama uh, CPP, and I'm going to go ahead and simply call this function. And we need to pass in a couple of things. So going to, the first one we do is in model, uh, model path, and they're going to say model, sorry, model uh, path. And the model path is going to be the model that we define above which is just the path to the model that we just downloaded okay okay so once i have that i'm going to pass in you can pass in other things like temperature you can other other pass in other, other stuff like that so temperature and if you know all, what all this means i have all this explained in my introduction the video to uh, uh to long chain so you can check that video also okay, spare the maximum number of tokens to be 200 uh, tokens 2000 tokens sorry you can spy uh top uh top p underscore p and it's going to be equals to we're going to say this to be one okay topic and then finally pass in the callbacks so we're passing the callback manager and the callback manager is going to be our callback manager to just created up, up so let me just actually rename this again let me just call it callback underscore manager that makes more sense okay so i'm going to use that callback manager right here so good so once i have the call manager specified i can also specify the boss because the boss is needed for this to work because we're going to be streaming the output of this model to our terminal that's why we need the boss to be true okay so uh, verbose is uh, required, right? You have to pass in verbose to be true for the callback to work, okay? So the callback, basically, the callback that we have here, uh, basically, it supports token-wise streaming, okay? So it, it supports token-wise streaming that can stream the tokens to our terminal. And for this, we, not, we need to have verbose to be on, to be true, okay? So once we have it done, I'm just going to go ahead and return uh, the, the model that we just created. So that's, that's basically what this function does, creates a model. And then simply returns to us the model so you can go ahead and specify if you want you can do type hint stuff you can go ahead and say this is going to be turned to us uh, uh llama cpp uh, object you can you can also say that this is going to be of type uh, uh llama ccp object just like that so that's if you are using if you're interested in using type hints okay that's how you can type hint uh, this function right here okay so this uh, this is going to be also you can also type in this and say call back manager and, and you can do all that okay so that's that's how we can uh, type into our code if you want to so uh, that once we have that done, I'm just going to go ahead down here and you can simply begin to call our model. So we can call the model and then simply return the output to the front end. So we can just go ahead and simply call the model. The first thing to call the model, we need to load the model. So let's say LM, uh, which is going to be our LM model. It's going to be called a uh, load model and just call this function. That's going to return to us the llama model, right? Okay, so once we have the llama model, I'm just going, I'm just going to go ahead and write a model underscore prompt. And the model prompt is going to be a string so we can say uh it's going to be a state string and it's going to be uh, you can go ahead and write the string i'm going to use a string uh, basically uh uh like uh, a string with like uh, i forgot the name of the strings in python uh basically this kind of strings i forgot they have a special name of them okay if you guys any of you guys remember let me know in the comment section below i it just keep my mind okay so i'm going to have you i'm going to go ahead and pass in question okay question and the question is going to be equals to what is the largest uh country on uh so i'm just going to ask it any question okay so you can go ahead and actually ask it any question that you want i'm just going to ask it what's the largest country on earth you can go ahead and ask it any question that you want so once i have i'm going to say the response i'm going to store the response uh response in number of type string and this is going to be equals to the following so i'm going to say llm and this will be passing our model question so model prompt and then that's basically what we need to do and that's going to go ahead and simply return to us and you can go ahead and print the model prompt if you want to if you want to you can go ahead and print it out if you don't want that's also fine so that's basically what we need to do so that's it so we are we have created a model created a function that loads the model we call that function to get the model back created a prompt and then simply call the model with that prompt and you can store the, uh, the output instead of here you can also just remove this if you don't want you can just leave it like this it will also still work because we have the callback that's going to stream everything to our terminal but i'm just going to leave it like this okay so once we have that done we are good to go to run our code and let me know let me let me just tell you some warnings before we even begin to run this so the first thing is that yeah so the first thing is that uh it's gonna take a bit of time to run this okay because it's not running on the cpu and i'm also recording so it's gonna be taking a bit of time to run this so make sure that your computer if you're having performance factors make sure that you put it on performance mode uh, just to get the most power out of it so you can see i'm on my performance mode means all my gpus and every everything is going to be on maximum capacity you're going to be running at full speed okay so make sure that your performance is on so once i have this done, i'm just going to go back in the terminal clear this up and just simply say python 3 and then uh, run that okay so run that 
and this is going to take a bit of time like i told you so it's going to you can see that executing and it's going to go ahead and take a bit of time okay so let's give it a bit of time and it's going to roll, uh, do everything and then begin to answer our, our question so let's give it a bit of time and let's see what the output that we get back so we can see answer and begin to answer our question basically it's streaming everything to our terminal because of the callback manager that we use so you can see the largest country on earth is russia which covers an area of approximately 7 17.1 17.1 million square kilometers so you can see we get back the output that we want okay so it's giving us even the value in miles so, it, so you can see we get back the output right here okay so just ignore this as a model output so just uh, ignore this so basically uh, it shows you that the model performance like the load time uh, in milliseconds runs and on all that information you can see all that all that there. you can see how much tokens have used so yeah so you can see all the token you can you can see everything that you need uh, total time in this about three about 30 seconds okay so that's basically it so that's basically how yeah we can basically use a model right there to get prompts so you can see that is purely using cpu so that's basically how to use cpu for your llm models okay okay so once we have this done uh, we can also go ahead and see how we can use this in gpu so let's go back uh, in here and let's see what you need to do so we have seen uh how to load it on cpu now you're going to see how to load it on gpu and if you're using gpu uh, go back to the documentation and make sure that you have the gpu installed the gpu version so, so you can see install open uh, using gpu so if you're using gpu sub, uh, using gpu uh, or, or cuda uh, basically make sure that you have this uh, already uh, activated for you to for you to work okay okay so if you're using macbooks or make sure that you follow the instruction to install it for macbook as well but if you're using windows uh, the instruction also here in their bit uh, for windows a bit difficult to do i don't know why windows is always uh, like this but yeah that's how you can do it uh, but for cpu you just have to run this and which we just did so now let's move on to uh, how to do it on gpu and if you're, your computer your computer doesn't have a gpu feel free to skip this step and go to the next step we are going to go ahead and uh, learn how to use c transformers in langchain so uh, if you have for guys who have gpus stick around and watch this okay okay so once you have that i'm going to open my uh, in here create a new file i'm going to call it uh llama uh, underscore gpu dot pi okay so the gpu version okay so once we have this done you're going to use a code that you already have so i'm just going to go in here and uh, copy this and then bring it in here okay so we're going to have the same code but with a bit of difference so the bit the, the major difference is going to be on this part we are loading the model okay so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do we're going to say number of gpu layers that you want to allow so this is basically uh this is the value that specifies based on your model and your uh, gpu ram so based, based on your vram pool you're going to specify this value you're going to say g underscore gpu underscore uh, layer is going to be equal to going to say 40 okay so i got these values from the official documentation and for me they work perfectly so i'm not going to go ahead and modify them so i'm going to say batch and the batch is going to be simply uh this kind of batch is going to be the number uh the number of tokens right uh, the number of uh, amount of vram in your gpu basically so this is going to be the amount of uh, this is what the documentation says that uh should be between one and c uh basically uh the num amount of uh, vram in your gpu be between one and amount of G amount of uh, vram in your gpu okay so that's basically it. So once we have this right we're going to go ahead and use them in here so we're going to go ahead and specify them in here so we can say ng right ng layers so you can say ng uh, layers so it's going to the ng layers right here and you're going to copy this and assign it right here good you're also going to pass in the number the number of batch uh, sorry basically an n underscore batch and n batch you're going to say n batch that we have up there so n batch uh, that's what you have right here so n batch right here so i actually got this right not path uh, batch okay so like this and then like this okay so that's it and let me not forget the semicolon right here Okay, I'm in a column. So once I have all those uh, specified in here, we are good to run on a GPU device. Okay, so that's what we need to do to run on a GPU. So uh, make sure that you have the, every, everything else remains the same. The only thing that changed is that we, we added this and this inside these arguments right here. That's basically what we did. So once you have done that, you're ready to run on a GPU device. Okay, so let me just go back in my terminal and then clear this. Let me just change that to be GPU and then run that again. Okay. Yeah, so you can see it was a bit faster loading up there so uh once it loads up so you can see it, it begins to answer the largest country on earth is russia right so russia then which has uh, covers 
an area of approximately 17.1 million yeah, square kilometers right and it's about 6.6 uh, .6 miles square miles okay so good so you can see we get back uh, the output there so our model works fine whether we're using a gpu or using a cpu okay so that's how to run it using a gpu okay so once we have that, that uh, there's no much of a difference between i haven't really measured the, the much of a difference between the two whether using the cpu or the gpu but i know uh, when doing a heavier task the gpu performance will really come into play okay so that's basically how to load this thing using a gpu okay so once we have done uh, this thing using a gpu now you're going to i'm going to show how to use a c transformers for this okay okay so let's move on to c transformers and let's see how uh, we can use this with c transformers and also i also promise that you're going to uh, show you how to do this with uh, uh, L, uh llm chains in lang chain right so we can actually go ahead and see how we can do this thing with llm in lang chain before we move into c transformer so let's go ahead and see how we can do that okay so i'm going to go ahead in here i'm going to create a file i'm going to call it l uh, llama and i'm going to call it underscore this is going to be uh llm llm chain dot pi okay so run that so once i have that done I'm just going to go ahead go back in here i'm going to go ahead and copy all the code in here bring it in here okay this is already basically the same code that we have so the, 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 the couple of things that i'm going to change uh the first one is we need to create an lm chain and then pass in the model that we the basically the llama model into uh, llm chain as the llm of that llm chain okay <laughs> that's a bit of llms a lot of llms in there but yeah let's go ahead and do that so the first thing we need to go ahead and, and load our model which this function does so good we are going to load our model and let's go ahead and load the model in here so once our model is loaded uh, what else what uh, one thing else i want to do is that we can go ahead and actually use it in here okay so let's actually change this code i'm going to say llm underscore chain is going to be equals to llm chain right remember that you have this imported so if you don't have this imported you should just say lang chain of uh, lang chain uh, import llm chain okay so we're going to use that right here so llm chain we're going to go ahead and pass in a couple of things so passing our llm and uh, which is going to be our uh our llama chain so our llama model basically and then you can also pass in prompts if you want to so we can actually develop a prompt uh, let's create a function that uh, presents us a prompt so that's one thing we're going to add to then be create uh create uh, a function to load prompt okay Okay, so once we have that, let's create a function that loads a prompt. So it's def, and I'm going to call it load. Uh, you can call it create prompt or load prompt, but if uh, you feel comfortable, it's going to say create underscore prompt, just like that. And you're going to go ahead and call this, and this is going to return to us a uh, prompt template at the end of the day. Okay, so that's how you can, how you can hit that. So you can also pass in a doc string right here and you say uh, create, create prompt template, just like that. So once we have that done, what we're still going to go ahead and do, we're going to have our prompt ready. So I'm going to call this one uh, default underscore template. Okay. And this is going to be of type string. So string, and I'm going to pass in a bunch of strings right in here. So I'm, 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 doing, I'm just going to be using uh, a prompt from the official documentation. Let me just add it in here. So I'm going to say a prompt copied uh, from lang chain docs. Okay. Just give them the credit. So once I have this, I'm just going to go into the lang chain docs right here and I'm going to use this prompt that I have. So I just saw this prompt and it really looks cool. So I'm, then, I'm going to be using that prompt. Okay, so I'm now going to be using this prompt right here. Copy that and then simply go in here and then paste it in here. So a uh, bit of space there and then simply paste it in here. So let me just uh, do this. Okay, and also I'm going to do this. Okay. So all we need is a human. We don't need a history because you're not gonna you're not gonna be maintaining any memory. If you guys want me to show how to maintain memory, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I will do my best to get back to you guys. Okay. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and simply create the prompt right here. Okay. So I think I need to format this a bit. So this way, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say prompt, and this is gonna be prompt. Uh, it's gonna be prompt template object and it's going to be equals to so this is going to be prompt uh, template and i'm going to pass in the following so i'm going to say input uh, input so let me get that right so input variables underscore variables i'm going to pass in our input variable which is basically what we need right here which is basically this in here so if you change the if you change this to be uh let's say um, what should i call it it's called this question then in here also we have to use question okay so question so whatever value you use in here must align with the value that you use in here okay 
So once we pass in the uh, the input variables, we're also going to pass in our template. Now our template is going to be our default underscore default template that we just defined above there. So that's constant. So once we have that, you're going to go ahead and simply return uh, then our, pro our, our prompt, which is just basically uh, a prompt template that you're returning right here. Okay. Okay. So once we have that, I'm just going to save that. So we'll get a bit of formatting there. So once we have that done, you can just go ahead and use it in here. So I'm going to get a prompt. So I'm going to say a prompt is going to be equals to, it's going to be of type prompt template. And it's going to be equals to, uh, we call it create prompt. Just like that, we call that function. We're going to go ahead and pass in the prompt right here. And anyway, the prompt is going to be the prompt that we just uh, created above there. Once we have that, you can just go ahead and return the LLM, uh, LLM chain or LLM chain. This is this right, here, which is this object. So we're going to be turning an LLM chain. So I'm going to say LLM chain. Okay, so make sure we change that to be an LLM chain. Okay, so once we have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. So that's basically what we need to uh, load in our model. Okay, so once we have this done, let's go and load in our model. So this is going to return to us LLM chain. So LLM underscore chain is going to be equals to loading the model right here. We're going to go ahead and simply call that model. Okay, so now to call the model is going to be a bit different. So we're going to have a simple prompt right here. So I'm going to modify this. I'm going to repeat. Just change this part a bit and just have that okay okay so once i have that i'm going to go ahead and simply call it right here so and say uh, i'm going to say llm chain dot run and then simply we run and we pass in our basically our prompt template okay basically our prompt uh, we can call it prompt or if, if you want you can call it question whatever that you want uh, that's basically up to you so once we have that done that's all we need to do so we load in our model we pass in a question that you want to ask the prompt and then simply uh, lm change dot run and we simply run this okay so this is going to stream the output to the terminal so we don't we don't have to actually store it in any variable but i'm just throwing it in a variable okay yeah you don't have to actually do that yeah but i'm just doing it okay okay so once we have that done uh, that's all we need to do uh, so let's go ahead and run this so i'm just going to clear my terminal and then simply do python 3 and then say uh, let me see what i have in here uh let me see what i called it i called it uh L llama llama and then uh llm chain okay so that's it and then hit run okay so uh we get our model loaded and then begin to get an answer to our question so one uh one thing i noticed whenever you're using the llm chain it takes a ridiculously long amount of time i don't know what prompts the llm chain is running in the background but it takes a ridiculously long amount of time to get back an answer you can see still now we haven't got back an answer yet uh by by but traditionally if you're using if you if you weren't using the lm chain by now we would have gotten back an answer okay so it takes a long long time if i using the lm chain so i'm just gonna pause and wait for this to turn back and then i'll uh, continue recording yeah so you can see now our model returns an answer you can see the largest country on earth is russia covers an area of uh, seven approximately 17.1 right i guess i memorize this value uh square square kilometers okay so that's basically it. So you can see when using uh when using lang chain uh lang chains LLM chain, uh, our model takes much longer to to respond, right? But you can see the the advantage of using it as well is that it is it, it does not only tell us just this part of the of of the of the response, which is what we get when using a normal uh without without using the LLM chain, you only get back this part, the highlighted part. But if we're using the LLM chain, it gives us more response back. So you can see it talks about uh, uh, North Europe, Europe here. So you can see that's the advantage of using it. So it's probably making a lot of much more uh, queries uh, or prompting than we are we are doing ourselves. So we can you get back a more in-depth answer. Okay. So I'm not sure about the validity of this answer, but yeah, that's basically it. And that's uh, the other advantages and disadvantages of using an LLM chain. Right. So you can see it right there. Okay. So uh, it's going to take a bit of time and it's going to return to us a bunch of other things that we never asked for. Like, I never asked for that question. Right? I never said that, but it's going to give me back this thing. So this is something I'm also researching and try to understand why are we getting back this uh, in case we never asked it to do that, but it's returning to us this information, which is a bit uh, strange. Okay. So I'm actually doing more research into it to, uh, to understand why that's been the case. And I'll let you guys know whenever I have the answer to that. Okay. So that's one of the, limitations of using uh of using uh of using uh llm chains okay so that's it so once we are we have that out of the way one thing i want to do is also uh basically move on to uh, the c transformer so we're going to use the c transformers to load in our models as well okay so 
we have already installed Citron. We have already installed this already. So I've already done this process. Now we're moving on to C Transformers. So let's go ahead and see how we can use C Transformers in here. Okay, so we can go ahead and create another file in here. I'm going to call it uh this is be a slow slowing down my machine. So let me see if I can stop this. Yeah, so I don't want that. So it's slowing down my machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say llama and then it'll be C uh transformers.py. Okay, so once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh I can just go in here and just simply copy everything and go in here and simply paste everything. So the only difference you're going to be using a C transformer in this case, okay. So what you need to go ahead and do is make sure that you have C transformers installed, okay? So you can go to Lang Chain and just search for C transformers, and this is how you install it. So pip install C transformers, okay? So make sure that you have that installed. I already have it installed already, so I'm just going to go ahead and import it, and we can begin to use it in our code, okay? So I'm going to go in here and just load in that C transformers. I'm going to remove the prompt template and the LMT because you're not going to be using it in here. So paste it in there. And then in here, I'm just going to go ahead and change this one and turn to as a C transformer object. So three C transformers object. And uh, let's see what I'm going to go ahead and do in here. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to have C transformers right there. I'm going to go ahead and use it right here. So I'm going to say uh, C transformers. And it's going to be of type uh, C transformers as well. So, yeah. Okay, so that's basically what we need to do. We need to pass in the model name. There's a you can pass in temperature if you want you know you can pass in this uh okay uh that's basically what we need and then finally return to us you return the model and here down here what is going to go ahead and do is simply uh get that model and simply ask prompt the model to uh ask the model a question and simply expect the model to return to us an output right so that's basically what i have done in here and let's go ahead and actually run this as i called it uh, llama and that's called C transformer. So I'm just going to run it right here. and say Python 3, uh, llama, and that's called and be C transformers right here. And then run that code. Okay. So that should uh, be fine. So we got an error right there. So I think I need, I don't need a couple of things in here. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and delete from in here. I'm going to, uh, I don't need the boss. So I'm going to delete that. I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm going to leave my maximum token. I don't need this right here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to delete this as well. I don't need this as well. Delete that as well. So keep the code much, much simpler. So we're simply going to load in our model. We pass in our model. Okay, model type. And I was passing the model type. So I'm going to say model, uh, model, let me see, model uh, type. And the model type we're going to simply say is going to be llama model. So model type is llama. And um, max tokens, you can leave this one to be, let's reduce this number to be 512. Just to reduce that number. Temperature, we can leave temperature to be the same as we have. And you also, can, I think it's specify, let me see which argument you have right here. You can pass in a callback handler. Okay, a callback Monday if you want to. You can pass in other stuff that you want. So you can pass in, uh, you can read through the to the documentation and you can see uh, what other stuff you can pass in. Okay. Okay, so once we have that, then let's not forget the comma right here. And also you can simply say verbose. You can say verbose is going to be true. And once you have a verbose to be true, you can also go ahead and actually use a uh, uh, basically a manager right here basically let me just copy the code from here you can use a callback manager so you can copy that go in here i see the callback manager in here and you can go by ahead and say call callback manager and pass in our callback callback uh underscore manager so callback underscore manager i don't know why it's not picking this up so i'm going to copy this and simply paste it in here so that's it so once we have all of that we make sure that we don't have any error in our code and we can go ahead and actually run this. So uh, let's run this one more time. And hopefully we don't get any error this time around. So we still get an error. It says, uh, let me see. So C transformers line environment variable model. So key, you're getting model error. So let me just see uh, what we need to do. So we provided the model, the model. Okay, this is not actually model path. It's just model. Okay, just the model, the name of the model. Or the, sorry, the path to the model. Okay, and then the model type and then the other thing. So max. So this is actually not max token this is actually max uh max new underscore token okay so max new token and uh yeah so if you don't have any errors that uh, this should hopefully work so let's try this out let the terminal run this again okay so it looks like yeah it's working fine so it's gonna take a bit of time to load in the model and then once the model is loaded in uh, we're just going to go ahead and call the model right here and pass into the prompt basically what is the largest country on earth that's going to go ahead and call this prompt right here so so you can see get back an answer right here it says that the uh, russia is uh, 
the largest country on the on, on earth. Yeah, so you can see uh it's written that well. So seventeen point uh one million square kilometers. <laughs> I actually memorized this in my head. Okay, so that's what we have, six point six miles something. Uh, million square okay okay so you can see just return to us uh, it spans across much over much over northern europe right so good so that's basically how we can also use c transformers in this case so that's basically it so you can see how we can load lama tomorrow using a cpu we are going to a uh, gpu if you know how to use it with uh uh, lang chains lm chain you also see how to use it to a c transformer right which is this right here right you know getting back all the outputs right here okay so you can see all that works fine so we have covered basically everything in here we have learned how we have, we have downloaded our uh, lama 2 model with 7 billion parameter one you can download a bigger one if you want to but make sure that you have a bigger cpu or a bigger computer we have loaded it on a cpu we have loaded it on a gpu we have, we have loaded it with the c transformers uh we have we installed lama cpp python also let now let, one more thing is that you can see this model is actually very heavy right i mean i'm actually having a very powerful computer i have 2 gb of graphics card and also have 24 gb of ram so that's actually uh it's not the most powerful but it's quite a, a bit powerful than most computers out there so you can see and it's taking a bit of time right and it's taking a bit of time and my computer is really heating and so when i'm recording the video uh, it's just really heating up right now so you can see one of the disadvantages of such models is that they are really big and uh, require a lot of computation, computi computation or computational resources to run, right? So that's where the idea of quantization comes into play. So quantization is that uh, the, the main idea behind quantization is that uh, uh, it's a powerful technique in using machine learning and deep learning. Mostly, it involves representing numeric data. So for example, if you have weights and biases, right? Weight and biases or activations. These are represented with numeric values. Now we can represent the same new, uh, numeric values with a lower precision. So we have things like uh, int64, we have things like int6, int8, int uh, uh, and other values of int, right? So all these uh, values have a different precision of values that they can store, right? So the standard, if you're using 8 bits, it will have a lower precision compared to if you're using 32 bits, right? Or if you're using 64 bits, it will have a higher precision than using uh, an 8 bit int integer value. So that's where the idea of quantization comes into play. You use, a pre, you use the, the precision of the numeric values that are used within the model, which are the weight, basically the weights and the biases, the activation, and other stuff like that. So if you reduce these values, then you have a lot a less uh, less uh, memory. It's memory less, more memory efficient. Uh, they are less heavy. So this can be used in different things, like whenever you want to maybe deploy an app on a mobile, mobile application, or you want to run this on a Raspberry Pi or something like that, right? So why you should use a quantized model so models that are, uh, are qu uh, that are go that go through the idea of quantization are called a quant a quantized model right so these are some of the advantages of using such a model so it reduces memory storage right because you are using uh, lower precision values uh, it reduces, reduces computational costs so you can run this on a lower device so if you're running this on a like in the cloud then you have to pay less for your, your usage uh, it's also deployment of as em on embedded devices like mobile phones, Raspberry Pis. You use a quantized model. Uh, it's, also, it's also good for energy efficient, like less computation, less computer uh, computer resources you're using, less energy you're using. Right. So, uh, it's good for the climate as well. Right. Okay. So, and then finally, uh, much more advantages. There are other advantages out there. So basically, that's all. All really, I wanted us to cover in this course or in this video. And I hope you guys have a solid now understanding of how to load. Uh, a llama 2 model on your own computer so let's check if this actually stop running yeah it's actually stop running so you can see this answer we get back okay so you can retreat and uh, you can also verify if you want to okay so that's basically why you want to use a quantized model or, or basically use the idea of quantization right to get a quantized model and this is the advantage of it so guys that's all i wanted to discover in this video if you guys enjoyed this so far make sure that you like the video subscribe to the youtube channel share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful also let me know a comment in the comment section below whether a negative comment or a positive comment they're all helpful uh for me to make b uh, better videos in the future so let me know what you guys think on the video and if this video help you helps you make sure that you like you, you subscribe and you share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful thanks for watching and see you in the next one keep safe